Okay, this time I mean it. The long national nightmare that has been the Rockets' negotiations with Donatus Modiunas is finally over. Uh, like the offer sheet proffered by the Nets and matched by Houston earlier in the week, Modiunas agreed to a four-year deal worth $37 million. This one has better guaranteed money for the player, better flexibility for the franchise. Uh, remember, the injury-prone seven-footer averaged around six points and three boards, but just 37 games mm -hmm. last season. Uh, we're going to get newsy now with David Aldridge. <laughs> why, why was this so hard to work out? Uh, a bunch of reasons, um, but the, the primary reason is that they didn't want to, you know, they made a lot of offers to him over the summer that he didn't like. Um, he wanted as much guaranteed money as possible, which you completely understand. Sure. Um, so the Brooklyn deal was $37 million guaranteed, but according to the specific terms of the contract, they only had to guarantee $31 million of right. it. So he held out, whatever you want to call it. They give him his money. He gets the $37 million now. But as you mentioned, now they have the right of first refusal three straight years, basically. Um, they can get rid of him in the summertime. Um, so it's a compromise, split the difference. He gets the money, they get the flexibility. He is an intriguing player, but yeah. so far, using an expression I like, he, he's been, I would say, less than the sum of his parts. Mm -hmm. Like you see the he big guy, you the see the range, sure. but he's been hurt a ton. Why was it so important to keep him on the roster and not just sort of turn the page? Well, you don't want to give up on your asset. And I think they looked at it, they look at him as somebody in this system, in the Antoni system, as a big that could really help them stretch the floor even further. Now, it, Capella's still going to start, and Ane's still going to back him up. Right. But at that four spot, you know, having Moldeunas to back up Anderson really can give them some flexibility and some, uh, some different combinations they can go to in games. Um, I think that's why they did it. It's not the money, really. It's not a ton of money no, it's not. for them. Um, and, but you don't like to give up your assets for nothing. Uh, and I think they felt like eventually – you know, that's the problem with restricted free agency, if you listen to agents, is that the player doesn't really have a whole lot of options. Right. Um, so, you know, Brooklyn finally pulled the trigger on it, and then Houston almost immediately matched it. So there wasn't a whole lot that he could do. He had to go back to Houston. Um, the question is, what happened in Detroit? That's the thing that everybody in the league wants to know, because he was traded to Detroit last right, year. Right, right. And they flunked him on the physical. Right. Nobody else has had an issue with his back. Brooklyn didn't have an issue with his back. Houston didn't have an issue with his back. Only Detroit had an issue with his back. Um, and so that's always been the kind of question. Like, he should be in Detroit right now shooting yeah. threes. Which Stan Van Gundy would like. He has had two back surgeries yeah. in the last few years, but that is an interesting question. Uh, I've always said if uh, Las Vegas ever gets an NBA franchise, Moni Yunus should sign there because he was unbelievable in summer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't always translated <laughs> in the regular season, but in right. summer league, he's incredible. That, that, that does happen. <laughs> uh, we're, we're approaching the December 15th deadline by which either the owners or players can announce their opt-out of the collective bargaining agreement next summer. DA, we've heard reports for weeks now that yeah. the two sides are close to a deal. I thought we were close to an announcement weeks ago. I, I thought so. <laughs> Will there be an announcement before next Thursday? I sure hope so. <laughs> Look, there... there I, I don't want to call it a snag, but, you know, there's some there's some issues that they're still not in agreement on. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if any of those issues rise to, well, we're going to blow it up and then. Die. Right. I hope that's not the case. From everything that I've been told, the major issue, which is always the, the split of BRI, right? What, is it, what do the players get? Right. What do the owners get? They've signed ba off let, on Let me that. interrupt. Yeah. Basketball-related income. Yes. As that's we right. all learn from the lockout. That's and, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. They've all agreed on that. They're going to have the ban just like they do now from 49 to 51% for the players. The players agreed to that because this, the amount of money that's in the system now is so large that 51% of this much larger number is a whole lot more money for the players. So right. they've signed off on that. So, you know, I continue to be optimistic. I was told today they're still talking. There's no panic, but they're still talking. It's not done yet. Please don't. Please, please don't make me reintroduce all these terms know, into my personal lexicon. No, BRI. No, I don't, want, a, I don't, want, don't to want to do that, that again. Hard cap. No. <laughs> no, no more of that, please. Uh, your hometown team, the Washington Wizards, yes. won last night. Woo! Yeah. A parade. But at 8 and 13, they appear to be spinning their wheels mm -hmm. again. How likely is a shakeup of some kind, roster, front office, anywhere, before the end of the season? Well, look, I don't think they'll do anything dramatic roster-wise, even though they, they, they may have, they may, they probably should, you know, but I think they want to at least see what this group does together for a, for a season. They started off terribly. Like, they were awful uh, the first couple of weeks. They've played better. Their defense is starting to play better. Oubre is starting to play better, their second-year player. 
So, look, if you look at the numbers of their starting five, it's, they're pretty good. The problem has been the bench. The bench has been non-existent right. Right. throughout most of this season. I heard that from Marching Gortat. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so, to me, trading Wall or Beal makes no sense because that's the part of your team that's good. <laughs> that's the part of your team that works. But we Which hear over and over again, they the don't really get along. They, they've acknowledged as much. I don't know if that matters on the court. Their on-court chemistry is not great, I, frankly. I, you know what? You name me any team that's won anything. Absolutely. I can tell you the, that there's, there's half the team hates the other half of the team. Right. Okay, right. That's, that's the biggest non-burger of all time. Yes, John, Will, John Wall and Bradley Beal occasionally don't get along. Yes. In other news, water is wet. That happens in this league, man. Yeah. <laughs> These are 12 alpha males. These are all the guys. The, every player wants every shot and he wants all the money. Right. So you're going to have some time. You're going to butt some heads on occasion. That happens on good teams, on bad teams. I've said this for a million years. The San Antonio Spurs have the exact same issues that every other team in the NBA has. The difference is you never hear about them. Right. <laughs> you never hear about them. It's an them. important thing. Yeah. yeah. And you hear about them in Washington. You said non-burger. Nothing burger, non-burger. I like that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there we have it. David Aldridge with the latest on what's happening I around the I could be wrong. <laughs> we could all be wrong. It's okay. <laughs>